Hello and welcome to my Sunday Thought. For once in my life, I'm doing it on Sunday. Um, I will also be doing, uh, I'll be doing a, a Facebook Live show uh, tonight as well. And you can always find those on um, on my homepage, Facebook, Lynn Ruth at Home, Lynn Ruth Miller at Home. And I always do it the last Sunday of the month. This time is not going to be a funny one, so I'm not sure there are going to be that many people there because it's more um, thoughtful and philosophical. This time, I wanted to talk to you uh, about uh, Purim. Purim uh, was last Thursday and Friday, and my intent was to do something on Friday. So you can see I'm always a dollar short and a day late. But here I am, uh, actually two days late, um, and I'm going to read you a story. Uh, this is on, uh, because I love Purim. Purim is the happiest Jewish holiday. It's the one where everybody goes out and does good things for people, makes everyone feel good. Um, it's an adorable holiday. And uh, this one, uh, this story explains the holiday, but I've always loved the story uh, because it's a true one. Uh, and it's when I was a very little girl. The Jewish holiday Purim celebrates the triumph of the beautiful Queen Esther uh, of Persia who risked her life to save the Jewish people. I never understood how clever and strong Esther was until the year my fifth grade Sunday school class reconstructed the Bible story uh, in a pageant and presented it to the entire uh, congregation. <coughs> that meant that I was 10 years old. Uh, the obvious choice to be Queen, of Esther was De uh, Queen Esther was Dolores Shapiro, the most beautiful girl in our class, and she comes up very often in my stories. She was absolutely exquisite, and now, as a grown-up lady in her 80s, she's a bridge champion. She also is, she's as intelligent as she is beautiful. Life isn't always fair. Um, she is wonderful. So she was the obvious choice to be Queen Esther. Um, Freddie Oaken, who has since passed away, so sad. Freddie Oaken uh, was King Ahasuerus, because he was so adorable, and he was, and no one could resist him. Larry Zaft got to be Mordecai because he was painfully shy, and the teacher thought it would be good for his ego to play the nice guy. The reason Larry Zaft was so, so painfully shy was because his name was began with a Z. So wherever we went and whenever we lined up, he was always at the end of the line and because of, of Z, and it destroyed his ego. So he was very painfully shy. So we... Um, we made him Mordecai, and in the uh, the Bible story, Mordecai is the hero. He's the grand, he's the, uh, the father. I think he's Esther's uncle. I think, and he is the hero. He's the darling who makes good things happen. Uh, Buddy Glazer, who was my first love, he was my first love. Buddy Glazer was chosen to be Haman because he was the tallest boy in our class, and he leered ominously if no one made him laugh. I adored him but he even, never even noticed me because he was in love with Dolores Shapiro. Uh, but I loved him. He was my first love. We started rehearsing our play the beginning of February, but right, uh, right after Valentine's Day, Dolores caught the mumps. That was when I got my big chance. The teacher decided that I could be the courageous queen because no one else could memorize all the lines fast enough. In those days, I had a very good memory. Uh, th times change. Times change. Uh, the parents were in charge of costuming their children. My mother wanted me to be presentable uh, when I appeared on stage, uh, but that would not be an easy task. At that time in my life, there was very little uh, that was regal about me. I wore braces on my teeth, outsized orthopedic oxfords because my arches had collapsed in ballet class. Um, I was painfully thin, and my mother tried to build me up by feeding me high-calorie foods that gave me terrible gas and an uncertain complexion. My hair was very fine, and the only way my mother could keep it under control was to braid it so tightly that my eyes developed an oriental slant. Uh, that's not very woke, but that's actually what happened. She couldn't find a crown. My mother couldn't find a crown that would stay on my head, and she finally uh, resorted to taping a rubber band on, on one that she found in a costume shop that was obviously made to fit Humpty Dumpty was an egg, who was an egg, um, and did not uh, fit me well at all. Um, the only gown that would cover my bloated middle was one of her old maternity dresses. Queens are supposed to wear velvet robes, I told my mother, not cotton prints with expandable waists. 
You'll look very regal, Lenny Ruth, my mother assured me, as long as you don't smile. Those braces tend to touch the light. Uh, the night of the performance, I stood center stage with my crown resting precariously on my eyebrows and tried not to trip on the sagging hem of my dress. I wore an apron over it and carried a cooking spoon to indicate that I had spent hours over a hot stove creating the dinner that would turn the tide for my people. Freddie wiped his mouth on one of his mother's damask napkins and decided to improvise his lines. What a marvelous dinner, honey, he declared. Where did you get all those recipes? I didn't remember that in the queue when we rehearsed the play, and I had to think very fast. Well, I always use the Hadassah cookbook, I told him, and I'm glad you like dinner because this one's going to, will have to be your last. I don't remember. I, I, <laughs> that will be your last. Freddie was really into the mood of the piece by this time, and he shook his head dramatically. Oh, no, he exclaimed. I was counting on apple knishes for Friday night. Well, I said, you'll have to order some from Brower's, which is a famous delicatessen in Toledo, where I am from. You'll have to order some from Brower's, because next Thursday, a bunch of thugs are going to do me in. Freddie paused and tried to remember what to say next. There was some rustling of programs, and then Larry Zaft, his face beat red, whispered something in Freddie's ear. My God, said Freddie, are you Jewish? No wonder you're such a good cook. This is terrible news. Who's going to do such a terrible thing to you? I paused and took a deep breath. This was the moment that would make me famous and save the day for all the Jews. I pushed my crown out of my eyes, and I turned to face Haman. The audience was silent, and I squared my shoulders. Buddy Glazer leered at me in his very best manner, and I faltered. He was really very handsome, and I adored him, and I just couldn't say the words that would send him to the gallows and make the audience boo him off the stage. Couldn't do it. I swirled around and I pointed my finger at Larry Zaft. He is the villain, I hissed. I am not, said Larry, and his eyes filled with tears. I'm your uncle. <laughs> By this time, Buddy had recovered from his shock at being saved. You're not even Jewish, you fraud, he said to Larry, and he leered in his most ferocious manner. You've been hatching a secret plot to destroy all the Jews around here, and I'm going to help Esther save them. The shock was too much for Larry, and he wet his pants. The teacher sidestepped the puddle that was spreading on the foot footlights and smiled at the astonished congregation. Wonderful improvisation, boys and girls, she exclaimed. Now it's time for our parade. Let's have everyone join hands and dance around the auditorium while our hospitality mothers put out the hamantaschen. The audience applauded and Buddy Glazer took my hand for the curtain call. You were really very clever, he said. That ending was a wonderful surprise. I blushed. Well, thank you, I said. But it was your quick thinking that stole the show. Happy Purim, Queen Esther, he said. And indeed it was. It was the happiest Purim of my life. And I always have loved that story because whenever Purim came around and everybody tried to be all kinds of interesting characters, uh, I always wanted to be Queen Esther. And there is a picture of me uh, as Queen Esther where I look like nobody has fed me for 30 years with big dark circles under my eyes. But I was Queen Esther by God, and I was going to save the Jews. Well, now I live in Stamford Hill, and anybody that knows about Stamford Hill, those of you who are listening, uh, many of you don't know, uh, it's a Hasidic Jewish community, and um, everybody wears the, the hats uh, and, the, and the, the black cloaks, and the white leotards, and when I walk out my front door, it feels like uh, I just walk into a performance of Fiddler on the Roof. And all the men have the long, high sideburns uh, that are longer than their dicks. I know because I married two of them, so I know. And the average size family, this is really true, is, um, is nine. And I saw a young lady with nine children walk into the local supermarket, and when she walked out, she had 10. And I could hear her in the dairy department saying, pick up your sister. I just dropped her on the floor. But it's absolutely amazing. And if you think that isn't true or you think that it's a joke, which I do use it as a joke, I was at uh, a lovely home for Shabbos. Uh, that's the Jewish Sabbath. I was at a lovely home for Shabbos. And this wonderful woman came in. And my God, she looked like a Sumi wrestler. And she, and, and she was t saying that she drives cabs now that the children are grown. I said, well, how many children did she have? And she said, 15. Fifteen children. I cannot imagine 
by the time she had number 15, I'm thinking all she did was just squat and number 15 uh, fell out. But I'm going to close this now with a happy Purim for those who celebrated Purim and for those who didn't celebrate Purim. Please know about it. It's the most wonderful holiday we have. And to remind you that I do have a book, and I'm going to be leaving the screen for one second to get the book. It's called Getting the Last Laugh. And uh, last time, to my utter joy, I kept saying, please um, get it and, and uh, uh, read it and find out how to make your dreams come true. And my darling Allison Victor got it. So hopefully uh, the rest of you will be just fascinated and follow Allison's lead. It's getting the last laugh. It's on Amazon. Uh, I would not get it on Kindle because we can't seem to get around to fixing it, and the print is very small. But if you have good eyes, get it on Kindle. It's a lot cheaper. Otherwise, getting the last laugh, Lynn Ruth Miller, and you'll hear how I made my dreams come true. And I'm still doing it as well. And happy program to all of you.